Okay, okay. Uh, I think we are live. Uh, well, at least I hope I am. Uh, I'm very, very new at this. Uh, so, let's just get straight into it. Uh, <laughs> Uh, for, for those of you who are tuning in, uh, I assume the majority of you have either come here from Twitter or YouTube. Uh, I am the Retro Game Rater, uh, as you may have seen some of my poorly edited videos over on that other website. Um, and, oh, yep, yeah, Ludicrous Fall, I can see you in the chat. Uh, thanks for joining us. Um, and, uh, yeah, I've decided to start a Twitch channel, which could be a very poor decision, but we'll see how it goes. Um, some apologies out of the way immediately. Uh, I don't have a camera. Um, <laughs> some, something that I was looking into, didn't quite get around to it. I kind of wanted to, you know, go for something uh, of, of a higher quality than what I currently own. I've not made that investment yet, but uh, for now it's just a microphone. Uh, secondly, microphone may be a, a, a little poor too but who knows i'm not sure really this is going to have to be my first sort of like test stream and, and and just kind of see how this goes uh and then i can kind of go back and make adjustments if the game audio was too loud feel free to let me know if my microphone is too loud feel, feel free to let me know if i'm terrible at the game uh i shouldn't be because i've played halo a billion times but feel free to let me know and uh, yeah, I mean, I, I thought I'd just kind of start with Halo Combat Evolved, uh, something I've played a whole bunch of times, as it will give me something a bit of, of, of an easier uh, go in my first stream. Um, but yeah, let's uh, let's let's kick it off. Yes, inept Saiyan is uh, my gamer tag. Recently been changed. Um, as the, uh, the, the the Xbox Live sort of parameters for a gamer tag were sort of lowered. It used to be a much longer name, then I had to shorten it down. Um, so we're kicking off here. I, initially, I was going to go with playing through Halo Combat Evolved on Legendary. Um, something I did once back in. 2002, it took a very long time when I had much more free time. Uh, nowadays, not so much, and uh, I've only got sort of like two hours here. But <laughs> Legendary is, or well, Legendary Difficulty is a, let's just say it's a chore. It's not exactly uh, something that I can, you know. We blazed through over the course of a few streams, so I've decided to go with normal difficulty instead. Maybe a tad easy. Also, I've Might turned off the anniversary uh, we were running visuals yes. and, and, and stuff like that, no mainly because I sort of prefer the originals. Um, I, think, I think there is something to uh, the, the, the updated visuals, but they kind of so feel a bit overly bright and saturated to me. Um, well, there is something kind of like dark but and cold to the original visuals for Halo that, in my opinion, give the game a bit more character. Um, I don't know if I can, can I switch it? No, I must have had it set. Oh, I think I've then. got it set hard to, back up to the classic visuals, so we're going to be sticking with that. Um, <clears throat> and yeah, here we are at the opening of the, uh, of the game. Let's give our old friends a warm. Good old Richard I've Keys. Attention, all combat personnel. Please report to your action station. Yeah, sometimes I forget how long this cutscene is uh, at the opening of, of the game. In my head, it's always just the unfreezing of Master Chief, and we're off. But <clears throat> I always forget of the, the you know the chat between Keys and Cortana. I always forget about Sergeant Johnson giving his sort of like rally cry to the troops and stuff like that. All of these bits, but uh, Marty O'Donnell's a wonderful soundtrack already kicking in here. You heard and the lady. Move like you got a purpose. Why does this game still look kind of sharp? I mean, it was always impressive back in the day. I kind of feel like it's held up, just because it's got a lot of just sharp edges. 
and it doesn't try to do any of the 2000s texture, it's just kind of a lot of simple, sort of like uh, worn down metallic stuff. Toss them away, laughing! Am I right, Marines? Sir, yes, sir! <coughs> Yes, uh, Ludacris, you were right about the Double normal time. difficulty, although Bungie always kind of claims that heroic difficulty is the sort of diffi uh, the difficulty that Halo was designed to be played on. All you greenhorns um, who wanted to see coming up close, this is going to be your lucky old, day. Yeah, it is that the weapons aren't kind of balanced for that stuff. Uh, it's sure playing playing Halo Combat Evolved right. on anything higher than normal Let's can be a bit out. nightmare because okay. things can Bringing be very systems unforgiving online. when you get Cracking into the two, case in 30 three seconds. and so on. You've got a bit more long range to the weaponry, but we'll, we'll get into that uh, later. He's hot, blowing the pins in five. <laughs> and here he is, Master Chief, Mister One One Seven. Or as the ladies call him, Big John. Actually, they don't call him that. I take that back because all of the Spartans were chemically uh, castrated as children, so this guy's sex drive is absolute zero. Welcome back, sir. We'll have you battle ready stat. Chief, please look around the Game audio is too loud. Let me try and fix that. Good. Thank you, sir. I'm bringing your health monitors online, sir. Uh, well, hopefully that's better. Feel free to let me know as we push on. Again, this is going to be a very okay, experimental sir, stream for the most part, uh, as I kind of figure out all of the best settings. I am running directly off uh, my Xbox One X. Um, you know, ideally the setup is, is the PC, but... Uh, just, just to kind of make things simple, I thought the Xbox was, uh, you know, the best way to go for this one because they have all the backwards compatibility stuff, and it's it's just easier to get things up and running uh, within a couple minutes. Um, oh God, yeah, I forgot about the tutorial. The ordinance techs usually take care of your targeting sensors, but we're short of time, Chief. Just look at each of the flashing panels to target them. When you lock on, it'll change color. Yep, 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 yep. We'll look at all of these lights. That's done. Now you're going to ask me if I want to invert the controls. I never want to invert the controls because anyone who inverts the controls is just not normal. Okay. Try looking up and down again, please. Apologies if I've offended anyone there who inverts the controls. Okay. I'll leave the pitch normal. But if you want, you can change it yourself later. I'm ready for the energy shield test now. Please follow me to the energy shield test station. Yep, that's good. Let's run over here. Get these shields up so we can get moving. Okay, bring his energy shields online, please. All right. Shields read as fully charged. Okay, sir. Bring them down Good to know. The Good to know on that one, Ludicrous Fall. Uh, yeah, I was never quite sure which was the first. I, uh, I always assumed it all kind of sprung from Golden Eye somehow, and just everything was iterated from there. But for me, you know, Halo was the, the first game to get it right uh, on console, in my opinion, anyway. Captain, we'll have to skip the weapons diagnostics. And I double, Truman. Aye, aye, sir. The skipper seems jumpy. We'd better get moving. We'll find you weapons later. Okay, I'll leave the self-diagnostic... All right, Richard wants to see us. You'd better get to your evac group, Sam. Affirmative. I just have to reset the computer... And now and we can inside. properly get Security moving. Security! Intruders in Nile 2! Please, yeah. Sam! Sam! Come on, we've got to get the hell out of here. Run, this let's way. run, let's run. Go. You're going to go over there and you're going to blow up and I'm going to stand here and watch it happen. Cool. And we are off. Again, Mario Dolls. Uh, 
Ridiculously good soundtrack kicking in there. Out of the way. So what's really, oh god, what's really hard for me with this game now is that I've played it so many times that it's hard for me to not just run straight through and ignore. Like this dude here, he's trying to talk to me, he's trying to say follow me to the bridge, and it's just, it's way too hard for me to not just run straight through to wherever I need to go, because for the most part I know exactly where I need to go. So it probably, if you're watching this from the perspective of, oh hey, I've never played Halo, let me see what Halo's like. This is probably a bad uh, stream to watch. Captain Keys. Good to see you, Master Chief. Things aren't going well. Cortana did her best, but we never really had a chance. A dozen Covenant superior battleships against a single Halcyon class cruiser. With those odds, I'm content with three. Make them four kings. Sleep well? No thanks to your driving, yes. So you did miss me. Report! It must have been one of their boarding parties. I'd guess an antimatter charge. Ma'am! Fire control for the main cannon is offline! Captain, the cannon was my last offensive option. All right. I'm initiating cold protocol on two. See, what confuses me here, and I probably you do should uh, you do what? Go down know better <coughs> as a self proclaimed yeah, Taylor fanboy, is that at the end of Reach, you deliver Cortana to the Pillar of Autumn, and they do one, and end up here. But the way Cortana talks to Commander Keys and Chief is if they've known each other for God knows how many years. And I read all of the books like a bunch of years ago, but I, I, I can't remember their sort of like first interactions, but when you play Reach, it makes it seem like this would be their first interaction, but they kind of talk as if they're old friends. Force deployment, weapons research, Earth. I understand. The autumn will continue evasive maneuvers into the US Yes, crouching is kind of awkward. Although I'm still figuring things out because I've set up my uh I've got the Xbox Elite controller. I've got some settings that I'm still trying to remember from the last time I played the game. Um But I'm sure we'll get along fine. Good luck, Master Chief. Hmm. Your architecture isn't much different from the Autumn's. Slide that don't SD card into the back of his head. I don't keep it loaded, son. You'll have to find ammo as you go. Another confusing line there. Uh, Keys is like, oh, gun's not loaded. And then as soon as I cross this trigger here, uh, right about there. Pistol full of ammo, but well, there you go. I guess I just had it in my pocket. Cheers, Richard. Um, I should state, for those of you who aren't aware, the Magnum those Marines could use is some help. by far the best? the best weapon in the game. And it's ridiculously unbalanced to the point where it almost breaks the game. It is powerful beyond belief. It has a zoom in like a goddamn sniper. And with enough ammo, you can pretty much just pick off whoever you want from whatever distance. Um, later games, it would be more like a pistol and it would kind of get nerfed, but it's such a strange experience to have an assault rifle. It's largely inaccurate. But sounds great. I do love the the original assault rifle. Sounds fantastic to use. <clears throat> it's got a you know uh, an awesome design to it. It's still a fun you know gun to shoot, which is always the these games. But it definitely is not the best thing to use when you're sort of in a sticky situation, shall I say? Absolutely uh, useless in a lot of situations. <laughs> We're just going to blaze through this mission because you know. God. Always pick up 
the overshield. Oh, Jesus Christ, didn't mean to do that. Still getting used to the controls, folks. Uh, I see we got six people in here. I'm not sure, well, apart from Ludacris, Fool, and uh, Josh. I'm not entirely sure who the other four people are, but uh, very happy to have you here. Hope you enjoy this very amateur stream. We go to the left here and catch this guy off guard. And even though I mentioned that the, the Magnum was the most powerful weapon earlier, I still sort of always default to the assault rifle because I think it feels somewhat more fun to use. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Mitch DCFC. Yeah, uh, on that last comment, we Chris for uh, <laughs> the history of Halo is, is, is a bit of a strange one um, because, from my understanding, is that it did sort of begin as a you know an RTS, almost like Command and Conquer style game for, for the Mac through a bunch of complex business uh, issues. Somehow ended up on the Xbox as a first-person shooter. The fact that they managed to turn this from an RTS into a first-person shooter, let alone what you would argue is called the console shooter, is uh, uh, incredibly impressive uh, in, in so many ways. Um, from, a, from a developer standpoint, I mean, I'm no developer, but you know, I know a few things about how the process goes. Turnaround on this game was uh, unbelievable. Uh, game ball, still too high. Alright, we will turn the sound down now. I'm gonna finish shooting. I wonder if I can just turn down the music a bit. Uh, no. All right, we'll just turn down the, the game volume. If it gets any, if it gets any worse then I'll have to start swallowing my microphone. And we're back, and that's how the Magnum eats people up. Um, oh, I can change to the thing. Okay, so yeah, this is a good example of kind of what I was talking about earlier in terms of the visual sort of upgrade. It is an upgrade. Uh, Everything sort of looks, you know, it's all HD and everything has sort of like more detailed sort of character models. And, you know, every, everything's sort of like modernized somewhat, but it's it's so bright and colorful that I don't know. This <laughs> maybe maybe just because you know I'm, I'm talking from an old man perspective here, but uh, th there is something about the the original design that feels a bit more, I don't know, militaristic, uh, you know, sci-fi-y. Uh, I mean, obviously this does look sci-fi, but it, 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 it almost makes it look a bit more cartoony than the original game did. Which is weird, because it's a game full of, you know, giant aliens uh, and a planet shaped like a ring. But, yeah. And uh, yeah, ludicrous. I, d I don't mind the you know the art style change too much. It's just you know personal preference. I'll probably stick with the original. But All hands, this is the captain. Prepare to abandon ship. Combat team, repel boarders until hot personnel are away. I just kind of think the lighting 
like suddenly everything is just kind of like feels way too bright. And there, there, there are other sort of uh, better examples later on in the game where they kind of remove a lot of the, the sort of grit and grime from, uh, especially when the flood uh, shows up. Um, it all gets a bit too sort of overly saturated. Uh, okay, I'm here. Let's go. <clears throat> and no matter how many times I play this game, I always get confused in these tunnels. There's something about them which I always second-guess myself on if I'm going the right way. I just look for the green light and away we go. There we are. We're too close. Slap those doors open. Motion tracker shows all clear. Wait. Still showing me tutorial stuff. I would have thought they would sort of uh, disappear as I've played this as many times as I have. <clears throat> Keep your head down. There's two of us uh, whatever, piss time. <clears throat> Keep your head down. It's just too powerful. Also, that this here. Incredibly satisfying. Uh, especially when you slap somebody on the top of the head and he spins it back. Normally, if I, was, if I wasn't if I was on stream, I'd probably just be running around tapping the melee button, doing this the whole time, but that's probably a bit annoying for those watching, so I won't. Always shoot him. I, I always forget that he just kind of, you know, blows up completely pointless trying to take him down. Absolute mayhem on the Pillar of Autumn. Let's get off this thing. I feel like I may need to turn the sensitivity up on turning left and right. But How are we doing, fellas? Welcome to the UNSC. Also, what I should uh, apologise for ahead of time as well is I am an ob obsessive reloader. Uh, so, if I, you know what, I'm not going to apologise for that at all. It just makes good sense. Why wouldn't you reload after firing every single shot? That's just how shooters are meant to be played. Finally, some grenades. Let's go. Hold that, hold that, hold that. One last life. Quickly, get aboard before it launches. Indeed, Josh Mitchell. Mitchell Mitchell? Mitchell. How have I got lost? There we go. Didn't trigger the cutscene properly. Now would be a very good time to leave. Punch it. Ah, sir. Indeed. Let's go. We're disengaged. Going for minimum safe distance. We're gonna make it, aren't we? I gotta say the opening to this game is Look. Well, at the time was uh you know so so impressive from both a technical and cinematic angle. Uh, I, I can't. I, I I feel like that there was sort of a, you know a shift in the industry after Halo was released, and I'm not quite sure sort of why it took as long as it did to get here. I mean, it, there are all the games you know in the past that sort of, you know, went for this cinematic angle, your Metal Gears and such, but yeah, for me, this sort of, like, delivered on all fronts will be fine. That's mission one in the box. I'm not sure how far I'm going to get into this game uh, across the two hours. I, I assume I'll be able to make it through roughly 
maybe uh, just under or around half of the game. Um, if so, you know, I'll finish it up uh, <coughs> another time, but um, yeah, see, see how we get on. Yeah, the Xbox does pretty well for widescreen, to be fair. Well, the original Xbox did pretty well for widescreen. A lot of the, the stuff I record for reviews, I don't actually have to convert from 4.3, um, which is always uh, very handy. It just makes the editing process for my reviews much, much smoother. Um, so I'm supposed to stand over there while I watch this ship come in. But again, as I've said, i played this so many times that I just start moving. Because why would I let the Covenant catch me slipping? Hopefully as well the audio's sort of been fixed now. Uh, it's not too loud and you can hear me clearly. If not, I can always, I don't know, like I said, swallow my microphone. Here we go. There's normally an elite in that little scrap there. I'm not sure where he's gone. Oh, oh here he is. takes care of that. Let's go find Sergeant Johnson and help him defend this point. Never saw it coming, did they? Funnily enough, I only actually discovered, again, somewhat shameful as, as a, like I said, a self-proclaimed Halo fanboy, I only just discovered recently that the Covenant's, no, no, not the Covenant, the Elite's language is just Sergeant Johnson backwards for the most part, just kind of uh, shouting random phrases and they just flipped uh, his voice work and lowered the pitch and created a whole alien language. Here I was for, you know, 20 plus years, or roughly 20 years, sorry, uh, thinking that, you know, they'd gone through the trouble in creating an entirely new dialect, when, no, they just said, hey, let's take that audio file, flip it, and we'll make it a bit more bassy. Um, I always forget the first, oh, there we go, first ship in here. Have it. There we go. So I'll, I'll try and do my best to show you what I mean about the <laughs> assault rifle and just how poor of a weapon it can be. Because even though the reticle will turn red when you're locked onto somebody, or not locked on, but when, when you're hovering the reticle over somebody, uh, you could probably fire an entire clip and not take somebody down, so... We'll just stand back here. That, there, there you go. Entire clip gone. Didn't even take down his shield. You get a little closer, it does the job, but that still took a full clip. Instead of probably about three or four shots to the head with the uh, <laughs> ridiculously overpowered Magnum. I mean, to be fair, it's always just fun to slap the grunts about. I think there's some ammo at the top of here, if I'm not mistaken. Correct, Ludicrous Fool, there is something... Uh, I mean, there, there is some script into the game, absolutely, 
but for the most part, the the combat sort of relies on the the enemies sort of like built-in AI that I don't know. <laughs> this is all stuff that's dead like basic now. But back in 2001, an enemy sort of like dodging out of the way or getting in, into cover or running away when its shields are low. Like, that was a pretty novel idea. Um, which, you know, again, in, in 2020, it's just kind of like, oh yeah, the the alien dodges out of the way, big whoop. But, you know, what, what that does is, is instead of certain enemies being in, you know, points A, B, and C, they just kind of land where they land and react how they react, depending on whether you shoot them with a certain weapon, throw a grenade, so it does sort of create a bit of randomness to the experience that, you know, makes the campaign a bit more fresh. And it, is, it, it to me, has always been a bit of an underrated sort of aspect um, of, of the game. Uh, like, you know, don't get me wrong, I can play the Call of Duties all day. Um, and I, I, I've, I've got nothing against a game that sort of has its scripted set pieces. But, you know, I think, I think the reason, uh, one of the reasons why I love this game and this series so much is because of the, the sort of sandbox nature uh, to its design. Um, which only sort of increased as, as, as the games, you know, went on. There's sort of limited tools that you can use in Halo CE, but the more weapons, vehicles, all that sort of stuff that get introduced over the games, you know, it only gets more expansive from there. And now we wait for Echo 419 to jump the war organ, we can get moving. Uh, sometimes I jump in the turret seat, not very often, because the AI of the Marines is so unreliable right on top of them. and they may as well be driving drunk so to save us all uh, some frustration and time and, and, and just kind of you know get this thing moving I am going to take the driver's seat slightly less fun because I don't get to you know use the turret but you know you do what you gotta do Now we've just got to wait for somebody else to get into the passenger seat. Alright, he's in. Oh, we've got Johnson. Perfect. Not that it makes any difference. Uh, he is sort of a, a, a main character in this game, but not as much as he would come to be in the later titles. This cave is not a natural formation. Someone built it, so it must And I will something. do my best to drive this warthog without falling out of it. Um, it's always bound to happen because the physics are as weird as they are. But, um, you know, another example here, sort of how well lit this sort of ancient and almost forgotten structure is on the anniversary sort of, uh, you know, remaster, remake graphics. And, you know, there's something about the, you know, the lighting that, that I think gives it a bit more, I don't know, mystery is the right word. Uh, I mean, it's supposed to feel like nobody's been here for a while. I think even, you know, if I'm not mistaken, even the Covenant have only supposed to have, like, rediscovered the rings recently. Uh, so as a result of that, you know, this is a perfect example here. I know this looks great, and I love the sort of, you know, the colour shading, no, the sort of, the, you know, the colour schemes and everything like that, and the lighting does look better from a technical perspective, but this almost looks more ancient and sort of in keeping with the tone of the game, but, you know, opinions, opinions. We've all got him. Whoa, 
Yeah, Josh, I don't blame you for not being a fan of the uh, the vehicle handling. Um, <laughs> it's fun and it's not. It's it's fun if you you know kind of anticipate what's coming. Um, hell of a lot of fun if you can get uh, you know some people together in multiplayer because the vehicles are indestructible and bounce all over the place if you throw a grenade in the right place, which is what me and my friend did many a time uh, back in, you know, 2001, 2002. But for the purposes of getting you from A to B in the campaign, eh, not so much. Yes. Uh, Leader Chris, you are correct. Going through tight sort of spaces, uh, or even, or you know, even even areas that kind of just have like small bumps, it just seems to throw the warthog off like so easily. Let's do a quick slide down here because why wouldn't you? Everybody still seems to be alive. Got plenty of health. We're good to go. Up to 11 viewers. That is uh, <coughs> pretty fantastic. Um, I've got to say, this is, you know, my first time on here. If I only created a Twitch account two, three battle. weeks ago. So I've not, I'm not even, you know, very experienced in even watching Captain streams, really let alone streaming myself. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty, pretty darn cool to see so many people in here so early. And uh, if any of you are watching this clip long after this is finished, then boy, I hope it, I hope you're enjoying yourself because oh, there we go. Remember when I was talking about vehicle handling? Hello, Steady Sphere. Good to have you in. Uh, Steady Sphere is a uh, you know good friend of mine, you should go follow his, uh, his YouTube page. And it well, almost fell out there, but we seem to be good. It's <laughs> just every single time you go over any sort of ramp whatsoever, any sort of lift, the, the, the car just decides to do, or the water auxiliary decides to do whatever it wants. But boy was... I mean, you know, you look off in the distance there, we can all tell that that's a skybox. I, I mean, it looks it looks a little more obvious now because everything's in HD. We can all tell that that's a big skybox wrapped around this sort of, like, 3D crater. But at the time, this was kind of mind-blowing. Um, and, and I'll tell you exactly how mind-blowing it was for me and my friends, is that I ended up with an original Xbox completely by surprise. Um you know, through uh, <laughs> my mother basically bought me one out of the blue uh, because she, you know, came into some money and decided to treat me uh, and the intent for that evening um, at the time was for me and my other two friends to play Smackdown on the PS2 the, for the entire night but instead uh, they ended up just watching me <laughs> play Halo and my mother ruined the evening for them. Well, it wasn't ruined in the evening, I guess, but... Uh, <laughs> let's just say that wasn't part of the plan. But they were kind of... We were also sort of, like, captivated by what was happening on screen. That nobody really cared. Um, and we never even touched Smackdown uh, that evening. But... Hey-ho. I will actually... I should say on this as well, you know, my plan for this... Twitch channel. Um, and nothing is really set in stone. Uh, it's all just kind of whatever comes to mind. Uh, like I said, at the minute I am playing directly off an Xbox, but eventually I would like to sort of figure out my setup for a PS2 and, you know, all of those bits and just maybe get some good stuff going with, uh, you know, perfect example like Smackdowns, as I mentioned earlier. Um, I would love to do a sort of like a career mode stream uh, on those games. Um, and there are so many games that I kind of avoid reviewing for my channel because 
time constraints uh, that I don't really have, you know, I, the, the stuff like RPGs and, and just kind of longer games that I don't really get stuck into because I can't review a Final Fantasy in the space of a week um, that I'd be able to get stuck into here, but, you know, we'll see how it goes. I've not really tested streaming on my uh, uh, sort of like laptop setup and all that. Um, but, uh, yeah. That's the plan. We'll see how it goes. Oh, that was some terrible shooting. Drop Dead Sam, you are correct. Uh, navigating the map is a bit... You kind of have to feel your way around the map. Um, that's, that's kind of always been been the case with Halo C. It's it's a lot of you know kind of I don't know spaces that don't really tell you exactly where to go um, for the most part. Which on the first time playing uh, made the whole experience a lot more kind of like oh where do I go? But yeah, it, it's uh, that kind of wears off quickly. Um, Especially in some of the later levels, where they kind of flip uh, the missions and, and just kind of do everything a bit backwards. But, uh, I've got to say I'm very happy with uh, my performance with this sniper. And then I made that shot. Okay. It's okay, we've still got the trusty pistol. I think this is going to be the last ship that we need to... Uh, deal with. Echo 419 to Cortana, come in. We read you, Echo 419. We have survivors Still that have need dust off. Pick the assault rifle Cortana. back up. On my way. These lot have been rescued, and area. we can get the hell One out of here. And another near the head of the river. Oh wait, where'd Johnson go? Is he dead? I think I think he's dead. Is there anyone else from this vehicle, uh, this uh, pelican that can jump in here? Anybody? Three seat in the back. You, sir. Welcome aboard. Let's go. Oh, wrong way, wrong way. Sorry, it was reading the chat there and decided to drive into a wall at the same time. Yes, uh, yeah, the radar, the, the radar works and it doesn't work at the same time. I guess, you know, it gives you, it gives you a, it gives you the information it needs to give you, which is there is an enemy nearby, but apart from that, you know, it kind of can be a bit vague, especially in multiplayer. Uh, which on Halo 2 I played a lot of. Um, I could, probably could be a little more tactful on <laughs> how to take out these enemies, but it's always just better to just run them over. Especially because I can just get out and pick up another sniper here. And away we go again. Oh, sorry, Gunner Man has already took all of them out. Good job. We got more, we got more. I feel like some people would probably say the sniper rifle is an incredibly easy weapon to use, but I almost don't care. Like, most snipers have a bit of sway to them, whereas this one is a bit more, I don't know, twitchy. Uh, you know, almost like your, your quakes and your unreals and, and stuff like that. Um, and even though I don't exactly feel <laughs> like that skillful, uh, getting kills or, you know, headshots with it, it's still a really satisfying weapon to use. Um, especially because it's just got s such great sound design attached to it that... Um, and, and that kind of goes for a lot of the weapons in, in this game, as I've said earlier. Okay, I think I've wandered too far. I need to trek back over to the Warthog.
Let's make sure as again, as I said earlier, you know, this stuff looks dead basic now, but this is a pretty big space to kind of operate in it back in 2001, 2002, you know, especially considering the draw distance. Um, and well, maybe that's been cleared up actually in this version, but I don't remember having any trouble with draw distance in, in, in the first game. It wasn't overly foggy. Um, so yeah. And away we go again. Awkwardly get around these trees and rocks. Oh wait, I don't think we're done here. Ah, oh, there we go, we killed the last grunt. Controls, run them over, run them over, run them over. Get that guy, get that guy. Good driving, good driving. I think I'm pretty sure we can just skip these lot here and over this ledge. Oh, that's gonna fall, that's gonna fall. Alright, whatever, I'm out. Magnum time. Hurry and find the final lifeboat so we can link up with the rest of the survivors. Maybe they took cover in that structure. Let's check it out. Uh, it's the we entrance. The interior there we go. Structures before we leave. How we doing, boys? It's good to meet you. I cannot get through that guy's shield. So yeah, as I say again, that kind of looks cool, but, oh Jesus, you kind of see what I mean by the difference. It's almost sometimes adding too much detail, you know, can be a bad thing. Um, there is something, that this looks more alien to me. That looks like any sci-fi structure that, you know, a human, a human could build. There's, there is something very alien looking about you know, everything there, but we get back to it. I promise I will try not to spend the entire stream talking about how the original visuals uh, <laughs> are, are, are better than the remaster. God, maybe I should have put this on Heroic. I seem to be burning through these guys. Then again, I say that and then we'll get further into the game and I'm sure there'll be a section where I won't be able to get through without dying a few times. Where you at, boys? Where you at? Is this what I mean about red dots? There are red dots all over that radar. You don't know exactly where they are. They could be in front of me, below me. They could be up there, which I think some of them are. get upstairs. Sorry if you can hear my dog barking in the background. Uh, maybe you can't and that was an unnecessary apology, but whatever. That's what the British do until they apologise for everything unnecessarily. Good stuff. Yeah, sway, uh, ludicrous full sway and sniper rifles, again, perfectly fine. Um, I think, you know, there, there are just some games that do it better, do it better than others. And Halo to me has always been a very straightforward, shooty shooter, which isn't a very good way to describe anything. And what I mean by that is I would probably place it more in the categories as, like I said, the Quakes, the Dooms, the Unreals. Stuff that doesn't lean too hard into realism and uh, is more about just kind of, you know, having tight mechanics uh, to its gameplay. Um, but again, after this stream, I'm probably going to be playing Call of Duty. So, you know... I think we're done here. I just have to go over to... Are there more people? There can't be. 
I was almost certain I'd dealt with everybody downstairs. I've got no red dots. Oh, there we go. You lot get upstairs. To finish this level. Yep, steady, fi uh, steady sphere. They did change quite a bit, um, as you can see. And you know, in some ways, it works. The grass and the foliage and the, all that kind of stuff that looks awesome. The water has got a great glimmer to it. Um, awesome again. Um, <laughs> I mean, to be fair, in the original, the water has a nice glimmer to it as well. But you can almost see the visual, uh, the, the, the sort of the texture repeating on itself, which. Um, yeah, again, not as noticeable back in the day, but hey ho. There's our ride. Get aboard and let's get out of here. Also, if somebody wants to take count of the amount of times I say hey ho, that would be great. Um, mission two done. Which Call of Duty, Ludicrous Fall, uh, uh, Modern Warfare, or Warzone to be more specific. Um, which has quietly been one of the best games of this generation, in my opinion. Uh, real, real, like, snuck up even on me. As I sort of quietly just played it non-stop without even realising how much I was in enjoying it. And now me and my friends play Warzone non-stop. Um, but, uh, yeah. For, 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 the, for this for this Twitch channel, uh, you know, it'll be kind of dedicated to all of the sixth generation stuff, so uh, I won't be streaming, you know, modern day Call of Duty and, and, and all of that jazz. Okay. So, quick comparison. See, this, you know, I can see. <laughs> I, w I would say the sniper rifle looks quite busy. You know, in comparison between the two, there is something about it where it's just kind of like there's a lot of elements uh, to that weapon there, and you know, the added foliage in this in this little section does add something to it. But you know, I was never quite sure as well in this section. It's supposed to be kind of stealthy, but it never <laughs> I never seem to get it right. I always get spotted before I get, you know, a couple of shots in. I should probably go for the turret guy first. That's uh, always a good person to take down. I've got plenty of sniper ammo here, so... Somebody's taken away my Magnum, which I would have preferred to have uh, held on to. But go, he's done with. Grunt's running around the rocks. There we go. Any more of you? Right, let's get around this corner. Yes, Modern Warfare does take up quite a lot of uh, storage space. Luckily, I never really have too many games installed at one time anyway, but uh, I think currently I've only got about maybe a hundred uh, gig free on my hard drive. Uh, I, th I think the Master Chief Collection and Call of Duty probably take up close to two to three hundred gigs alone. Um, uh, oh god. See how that goes, especially with. Uh, I'd be interested to see file sizes on the new consoles. Maybe they'll be fairly similar, who knows? I, I don't imagine we'll see a giant jump uh, straight away, because from what I've seen so far, we're not, we're not taking any big leaps, uh, at least for this year. Um, you know, I'm still looking forward to getting the new console, and, um, or, you know, 
I, I intend, I've got, I have a pre-order for the Xbox Series X and the PS5, I intend to get both of them, did not mean to pick that weapon up. Um, so uh, yeah, we'll see how that goes. Do I love this music? Uh, Martin O'Donnell, uh, if you if you're unaware, was the composer for all of the Halos all the way up until Reach, and then obviously left with Bungie to uh, you know go work on Destiny and stuff like that. Um, <laughs> as far as I'm aware, actually, he's a free agent at the moment. Uh, I'm surprised 343 uh, didn't bring him back in for Halo, but. The soundtrack that this guy put together, especially considering from what I heard, he composed the the main Halo theme in his car on the way to the office. Um, which, well, yeah, I do. I do. I have to say anything more about that? I mean, the Halo theme is probably in like the top five of most well-known video game themes ever, 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 ever. So. You know, if you're able to come up with that on the way to work. But yeah, that says a lot about, you know, kind of the talent you have as a, you know, composer um, and musician and such. Um, but I will say that there's an element to the Marty O'Donnell soundtracks that he used in Halo that I could never quite put my finger on what made them so... Special, and it could, to me, it could just be just pure nostalgia, um, and and just nothing but. Oh, hey, I was 11 or 12 when I heard this, so um, you know, it, it's always it's always going to have this sort of like special place for me. Um, which you know, I'm a big, <laughs> I'm kind of a big believer in the cynical rule of you know whatever it is that you played at the age of around 11 to 13 is most likely your favourite game. Um, it's, it's a rule that never seems to, you know, kind of fail me. Around that age, there's something about that age where you kind of, you're first experiencing stuff and you also have the the, the mental capacity to, uh, I don't know, understand some, like, deeper themes. The and, not, and not just, you know, I want to shoot stuff. Generally, everybody kind of experiences their favourite game around that age, which, you know, for me, the the Halos, the Metal Gears, all that sort of stuff. Metal Gear was a little bit older. Uh, sorry, a little bit younger. Um, I was kind of like seven or eight when that game dropped, but... Um, yeah, sorry, I, I got distracted there. Marty O'Donnell's soundtrack, there is something to them. There is a, a, a quality... Um, about them that seems very fitting for a game, but not so much. They're, they're, they're almost not, they're not movie-like, like current soundtracks. It wouldn't fit in any other sort of medium other than a game. It wouldn't work for a TV show, a movie, or anything like that. It, it just, it does, they do sound very much like video game soundtracks, but they still sound sort of... I don't know, there's, there's, there's an epicness to them. Uh, I mean, there's none of the soundtrack going on at the minute, but... There is a kind of like an epicness to them, but... Uh, or, and, and sort of this... mystery... mixed in to, you know, everything that, that, that goes on. Um, it's not just kind of... There's a lot, a lot of the soundtracks that, you know, as you can imagine with the, you know, the channel that I do on YouTube, I get to experience a lot of soundtracks from the early 2000s. And there's a lot of dancey, electric, uh, uh, kind of thumping, bass-heavy, you know, just kind of like generic repeating stuff that is supposed to play, uh, you know, in the background to sort of distract your mind from... <laughs> like the monotonous that may be going on, whereas the soundtracks in, in the, from Martin O'Donnell, and not all of the Halos, they sort of like fit in with the action in a different way to me. That uh, they, they they kind of like sync up so well, um, and I'm not sure how they you know how they did it. It's complete wizardry to me when some of the soundtracks sync up in in some of the bigger moments. But you know, for all I know, it's just a simple pre press of a button. And now we have the hunters come down here and we just lob grenades at them. 
try not to kill too many of our marines. We've got some stickies. That one is back. Oh, sorry, that marine's dead. That's my fault. My fault. Right, one down. That's the young guy. Oh, there you are. Get behind him. Let's get enough shots in him back. And he is dealt with. Um, yeah, I mean, well, Lucas, uh, the sixth generation is kind of an interesting one, and in some ways I'm, I'm going to sound like a hypocrite here, because to me it's uh, an incredibly unique generation, but as I said earlier, the, <laughs> the rule of whatever you played between the ages of 11 to 13 is always, you know, going to be sort of special, and I'm using, you can't see, but I'm using finger quotes when I say that. Um, the interesting thing about the sixth generation for me is that it's sort of on the cusp of two sort of like eras of gaming, where during the, you know, <laughs> the, 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 the Mega Drive and, you know, SNES days and, and all the way up to sort of like PS1, uh, N64, people were literally making games out of anything. Whatever idea they, you know, they had come into their head. I think, the, you know, not too long ago I saw a Austin Powers pinball game for the PS1, which tells you all you need to know about how easy it was to get a game greenlit back in those days. You know, the fact that in the PS2 days, 50 Cent had a third-person shooter, again, tells you everything that you need to know. But the 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 difference between sort of the Mega Drive and NES days is that, and and, and sort of the sixth generation, um, when once you get past, once you get into PS2 and GameCube and even Dreamcast, all of that stuff, it's it's sort of where these two sort of eras start to clash of high production values that we'd go on to see today, where people are going, okay, there's a lot of money to be made here, let's throw some millions at it. And the other side of it, where people are still making games literally about anything. Now we're obviously in this era where games have to be sort of a safe bet, and we see less stuff released on a big scale anyway, and you know, obviously there's still the indie scene, and a lot of cool stuff that comes out of there, but if it's a AAA title with millions of dollars behind it, or millions of pounds behind it, should I say, then it has to fall into a certain category. It has to be, uh, you know, an RPG that's going to take you 50 hours to complete, um, or an action RPG, and it's going to have a whole bunch of side missions and this, that, and the other. And the, the variety has sort of narrowed, even though the money has gone up and the production values have gone up which in the sixth gen when people were really first starting to spend money but you know willing to make a game about literally anything you did see a lot of innovative stuff um and 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 that's kind of why i focus on it as a you know as a generation personally because there's just so, there's way too much interesting stuff in there my my personal collection of sixth generation games i think is somewhere around I don't know, anywhere between two and somewhere between two and four hundred. I'm not exactly sure. It's easy for me to lose count. Um, but there's still a unbelievable amount of games that I don't own. Um, everything from you know stuff that is is actually considered <laughs> uh, classics to you know kind of like garbage shovelware. Um, which I try to avoid, but it, they always make entertaining videos uh, for the YouTube channel, so sometimes I cave and, and pick those up. Um, bad shooting there. Uh, that weren't too bad. Um, but yeah, the, the sixth generation, again, I sound like a massive hypocrite because I've just said that, you know, whatever you played <laughs> between the ages of 11 and 13 is special to you and nobody else, but, you know, whatever. I'll be a hypocrite and I'll stand by it and I'll say that gaming was in a really good spot back then. 
not to say that it isn't now. I, I think there's a, there's a hell of a lot of variety to, for people to go with, and no matter what you're into, you can kind of find something to play nowadays. Um, and, you know, boy, do I love uh, high production values, and, and, and this game would have been classed as high production values at the time as well. Um, but yeah, there is a there's, a there's a randomness that I kind of miss uh, to the industry, if I'm being dead honest. Exactly, Steady Sphere. You would not get Mosquito Simulator um, in today's world. Oh well, I mean, maybe you would, but it wouldn't be released in the same sort of. It would be an indie title on Steam. Yeah, ludicrous. I mean, the industry's a, uh, it's a it's a much different place now, of course. Um, you know, the stuff that comes out today. Don't you know? Don't get me wrong. I'm still <laughs> I'm still playing all of the games that I can get my hands on. Um, which you know, as an adult with a, uh, a, a you know <laughs> a full time career and friends and family and all that sort of stuff, probably not the best idea. But um, there is there is something to it, but at the same time, I suppose you eventually, uh, you know, things change as you get older. I guess you start to become a lot more aware of, of 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 what's going on. I mean, back in the day, I used to just go into you know an electronics electronics boutique, a game game station, Forbidden Planet, and go into one of these shops and just browse the aisles. And even though I read. Uh, a ridiculous amount of uh, gaming magazines and you know it was impossible to keep up with everything on the shelves so a lot of my gaming decisions were sort of based on a cover art of oh does that have a ninja on it yep cool i'm buying that does that have a robot on it yep cool i'm buying that um <laughs> and nowadays you know you become so familiar with everything in the industry and, and kind of see enough things enough times i'm completely lost here where am i going um you see enough of the same game at the same time you can kind of watch like a two minute trailer and then immediately go yep yeah, i know whether i'm into that or not um and I, I, th I think that's kind of what changes for a lot of people um especially for me i mean i kind of you know in one sense yes i do sort of miss uh just sort of wandering into my local shops every weekend, trading everything I'd finished and like seeing what else I could pick up. But at the same time, I did waste a hell of a lot of money uh, on some really bad games doing that. So a lot of stuff that I should definitely have not paid full price for. Oh God. Move out of the way. Oh. Too many people, too many people. You're done. You're done. Oh, no, you're not. You're still going, you're still going. I need to get out of the way. Oh. God. See, I'm starting to panic here. You can see where things are getting a little bit more intense as opposed to the early missions where I was just kind of blazing through everybody in front of me. I definitely need a health pack very soon because there's some hunters that will be joining us uh, through those doors over there, I believe. Get the overshield. I'm going to need all of the armor and health I can get before they start firing off their plasma cannon. Uh, who did I miss? Who did I miss? See, I d again, I've messed with the audio settings to lower the, uh, you know, the music and such, so that my voice isn't drowned out too much, but hopefully you did hear, this, hear the soundtrack uh, back then, which, you know, my point earlier about it sounding like it belongs in a video game and not too 
movie-like. Um, I could be talking absolute nonsense there, but that's my own sort of theory on, on what makes the Molly O'Donnell tracks uh, as, as, as great as they are. I kind of listen to them on repeat fairly frequently um, when I'm getting work done. Oh, come on. Just pop your head up. No. No. There we go. And, uh, yeah, once again, thank you to all nine of you here with me at the minute. Uh, I think we got as high as 11 at one point. That is fantastic. Uh, I truly do appreciate all of you joining me here. Um, this is running a bit more, a lot more smoothly than uh, than I anticipated. Um, so uh, yeah, it's good to see that I'm not just kind of blabbering on while dying constantly. I don't no, I've not died yet. Let's, hopefully, I can make it the full two hours of the stream without uh, going down. That may change right now because these two hunters start firing off with their plasma cannons and it's a bit of a closed space. Oh god. And I'm... Jump out of the way. No, didn't get him. Come on. Oh. It's, uh, it's getting dicey. Oh, I've got assault rifle ammo again. Cool. No, no. I refuse to die. I refuse to die. Get some shots on that back. Oh, that was panicky there. Good lord. I'm just going to run away from this guy. On normal difficulty, this is pretty embarrassing. I should have taken these guys down a lot sooner. Whoa. Jump out of the way for you. There we go. I'm happy with that performance. Took a little longer than it should have, but we got the job done. Now I'm waiting for this door to open, I believe. Got it. Somebody's. Uh, Everyone should move through now. I can't guarantee that it won't lock again when it closes. Oh, I'm completely oblivious to the the waypoint marker behind me. Okay. Be, which is rescuing Commander Keys because he seems to be unable to uh, prevent himself from getting captured as he does, I believe, twice in this game. Um, I mean, I can't blame him the first time. He went down with the ship. Uh, so I suppose he's just doing his duties there as uh, captain. But you know, capture me once. Shame on you. I won't finish that poor joke. Oh God. Why can I not find a single health pack. Cortana oh, to Echo 419. The shuttle bay door is open. You can start your approach. Roger. Echo 419 inbound. I, I, yeah, I, I, sorry, I did warn you ahead of time that I am an obsessive reloader. Um, so you're going to see that animation a hell of a lot. I'll just going to wait for these. Well, I don't have to wait for these lads to get in here. I'm just going to do it by, by myself because you know Master Chief and all that. What? What just happened there? Am, am I? 
Am I mental or did I just die for no reason? Oh well, we push on. I was hoping to get through the entire two hours without uh, a single death. That was going well until a grenade that was buried in the floor decided to blow me up into the ceiling. But we move on. God. Oh, wow. Well, that's definitely the record over. Could have got away with the first one saying, you know, the game glitched out, it, it you know, threw me off. There's no excusing that one. I reload way too much, even when I don't need to. Sometimes it gets me killed. Johnson, you're back alive. It's good to see you again. We lost you there on that warthog. Uh, back in the previous mission. But well, apparently you're indestructible or immortal. And again, I desperately need health back. The smallest sliver of health. Once that shield goes, all Master Chief has to do is stub his toe and it's game over. Somebody who, as I said, reviews uh, sixth generation games. Checkpoints are the bane of my existence. Um, Halo, Halo's kind of rough as well. And in some cases, Halo will checkpoint you even just before you're about to die. Uh, which is not helpful in the slightest. Um, but yeah, check checkpointers. I don't know why it took as long as it did to get right, but um, at the same time, you know, I suppose there is an element to oh god, I suppose there is an element to older games where there was this sort of idea of well, it has to be challenging because we sort of transitioned uh, across the generations of like games should almost be unbeatable because good lord I'm having a terrible time here um, you know you think about where games started it's we need people to put as many uh, <laughs> quarters or 50 P's into this Pac-Man machine as possible so you know I keep getting destroyed in this room um, you know games were supposed to be as challenging as possible so you could squeeze as much money out of the customer as you possibly could and you know, eventually we transitioned over to uh, being more sort of action experiences. And now games are a lot more forgiving. But yeah, there was a period there where again, the, the sort of like the two ideologies are sort of clashing. Um, oh wow. Uh, reload, reload. There we go. No one lives forever. Wait, is that the James Bond game or is that the... I'm thinking of uh, something else. Oh, God. Apologies for those of you in the stream. You're probably getting very tired of seeing this room. I'll mix it up a bit. I'll put on the... Uh, the anniversary visuals just so you've got something different to look at. Oh, God. All right, let's get serious. No, 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 no. 
no, okay, yeah, so right now I'm done with having to uh, concentrate. No, we'll go back to the old visuals. No one lives forever. Is that the FPS with the. It's like the British woman as the main character? I want to say. It's kind of got like a bit of, you know, open aspect to its uh, like mission structure. I could be wrong. But it, it, yeah, it is very, it's, it's basically female James Bond. That's the, if, if I'm thinking of the right game. Yes, that, yeah, that is the one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I played, I did play that. I intended to review that game, boy, uh, close to a year ago. And something happened. I can't remember exactly what was going wrong with my copy of the game. I think I got about maybe an hour or two's worth of footage before it just kind of like hitched. Uh, it, it got stuck on a certain spot. And, you know, at that point it was game over. And I had to quickly, rather than try and figure out what was actually wrong with the game, um, I just had to quickly uh, switch to something else so I could get started on a different review because I just didn't have time to mess about with it. However, I will say at the time, uh, it was fun. I remember the, the shooting being pretty cool. Um, it had sort of like a bit of an auto-aim to it, so you could kind of like run around at breakneck speed, just tapping <laughs> the... Uh, tapping the, the, the triggers and, and just sort of like firing off uh, as much as you like. Um, but yeah, it seemed like a cool game. It's a shame I didn't get a chance to, uh, you know, play it properly um, because the, the copy I had was a bit temperamental. But eventually I'll get back round to it. But there's so many games on my list uh, that I need to get to. Oh, sorry, that, that, that I'm working my way through. Uh, like, if, if I don't buy another game for about four or five years, I'd still be fine in terms of reviews. Coming here was reckless. You two know better than this. Thanks. Keys, good to see you again. Marines, lock and load your weapons. Let's be ready to move. Yes, sir. While the Covenant had us locked up in here, I overheard the guards talking about this ring world. They call it Halo. One moment, sir. Accessing the Covenant battle net. Yes, a punishing game is, uh, or playing punishing games is kind of, you have to be, a, a, you know, a certain type of person to get something out of that. Nine times out of ten, most people just kind of want to sit down and have a good time for a couple hours and then move on. And, you know, I'm, I'm one of them. Uh, I used to have a lot more time to, I suppose, 100%, you know, finish games and do all of the challenges and stuff like that. I used to hunt achievements to, to no end. Uh, I think I'm just shy of like 180,000 achievement points on my, you know, my gamer profile uh, or Xbox profile, sorry. Um, and, you know, as you get older and you, you know, you gain more responsibility and such, it's, uh, you, you don't really have as much time to waste of dying over and over again, which is kind of why I've stayed away from Dark Souls and such, uh, those type of games. And the rescue of Captain Keys continues. Do we have any health packs? Do we have any health? Oh god. Sorry, I forgot about you boys over here. Deal with them very quickly. I'm sure there's somebody else behind this door. Alright. There's not a health pack. There we go. Thank god. Sometimes this thing, this game gets quite scarce with health packs and I start to get very nervous. Uh, can I pick up that? I prefer the plasma rifle. I've kind of stayed away from the Covenant weapons in this uh, playthrough, which, to be fair, I tend to do a lot of the time anyway. And it's not to say that I don't like them, but I think this, sometimes when playing games we develop our own sort of like headcanon of like, oh, 
this character wouldn't use that weapon. He would only use the human weapons, so... But yeah, they are fun to use. Um, they're, they're a bit better in uh, Halo 2, in my opinion. He gets stuff like the carbine rifle and I think the needler, once uh, you can sort of like dual wield them, that's uh, a bit of a more fun weapon to use. So again, I said I'd stay away from doing this, but this might be a good time to uh, go into it again. Now the difference in visuals here is... <sighs> I mean, I suppose you can sort of see it, uh, kind of what I mean, is that they've added detail, it is sharper, they've added lighting, and, you know, plenty of textures and stuff, but, I don't know, there is something to this these textures here, especially on the wall, or the walls, uh, I should say, that do have a more alien feel to them. This, this kind of feels like it could be just any sci-fi environment. Um, and I don't mean that in a way of <laughs> sort of like to talk shit about developers and, you know, the work that they have to put in to, to get this stuff right. I'm sure that, you know, they had the best of intentions. It just kind of loses uh, something. It's, it's it's almost too it's too bright. It feels a bit sort of less um, intimidating. Would probably be the best way for me to get that across. But yeah, I think it looks less alien. And you know, Halo, if if anything, is about aliens. Oh, he's gonna get me. Ah, no. Sixteen-bit dad. Good to see you here. Don't worry about being uh, late. <laughs> uh, you can always uh, go back and watch the stream another time if you like. Um, but good to have you all here. Uh, as I said before, appreciate everybody for joining me. Been a fun time. I've got roughly half hour left. I could probably squeeze in one more level before I have to call it. But um, yeah, this has been this has been good stuff. How's it going? Um, yeah, pretty good can't complain uh, in the context of a pandemic, I guess. I've, I've, uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's a very hard question. A very hard question to ask. Uh, answer, I should say. How, how are any of us doing? <laughs> um, let's just say I'm taking it day by day. But, you know, playing games in the meantime. At least, you know, I'm, I'm one of the, let's just say I'm one of the lucky ones who, uh, you know, hasn't had any uh, employment trouble. So I consider myself a blessed man. I still get to, uh, you know, play games. And we crack on. I should say as well, uh, as I, you know, I did shout out Steady Sphere earlier, 16-bit uh, dad as well. Another person you should check out um, on YouTube and on Twitch. He's been doing this thing a hell of a lot longer than I have. Um, so his, uh, his Twitch streams are bound to be a bit more, um, or, you know, quite a bit more, uh, you know, sort of impressive than, than mine. Um, and uh, let's just say if you are interested in Final Fantasy, then, you know, easier man. What am I supposed to do here? I swear I just saw him. Oh, there we go. Good lord. It says we're up to 13 viewers on my screen. That is a hell of a lot more than I expected for my first stream. I gotta say as well, this time is flying by. I feel like I only started this stream about 10 minutes ago, but always enjoyed this cutscene. Um, yeah, it generally feels like I only started streaming about 10 minutes ago, but um, I, I did ask 16-bit uh, <laughs> dad for some advice on you know streaming and such beforehand, and he was he mentioned something about uh, you know some people stream up to six hours, and at the time I kind of thought that is ridiculous. 
but I can sort of see how you can reach that amount of hours for an hour and a half and it, you know, feels like no time has passed at all. Um, and, and here we have what is arguably the Halo level. The island has multiple structures and installations. The, you know, the main theme is kicking in, and this level kind of has, on mission, has everything in it, uh, running and gunning, it has Warthog section, it has outdoor, indoor, like linear sections, open sections, uh, a variety of weapons, all that stuff. Um, it's, it's literally a vertical slice of all of the elements of Halo apart from the Flood combined into one level. And while storming this beach in 2020 is not the mind-blowing experience uh, it was back in 2001, it is still pretty darn impressive. Oh, don't put away the Magnum yet. Again, hopefully you can hear the music, because I did have to adjust the audio earlier in the stream as uh, it was drowning out the sound of my monotone voice, but there we go. And, you know, I mean, I've got to say, on the anniversary, when I switch over to the, the, the redone graphics, that looks pretty cool, that water looks awesome, and the vista in the background, that does look fantastic. However... Again, I just kind of always go back to the original graphics, and <laughs> the, ri the, 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 the ring almost feels more tangible uh, in these visuals than it does there. That feels like a background, although it is a very nice background created by somebody who is a very talented artist. That feels like it's part of the world a bit more. Um, but yeah. And I know I said earlier I'm going to do my best not to go, hey, okay. look at this graphics comparison, and here's why this is better and why that's better. Yeah, I'm not exactly holding to that uh, that deal. But hopefully the stream is still enjoyable, so. And good to know that cheers, 16-bit uh, dad, for letting me know the, the levels are decent. Um, I'm hope yeah, I'm hoping the microphone quality as well isn't too bad uh, either because I'm essentially just using my headset here. Um, I do I do have a microphone setup that I use for my reviews, uh, but it, just kind of setting that up uh, and and you know is is just much more complicated than just putting uh, or plugging in a headset to my Xbox controller. Yeah, well, it should, it, to, to, be, to be fair, it should sound good for a headset, because um, if it didn't, I'd kind of be disappointed. I think the this is this is the Turtle Beach, I can't remember the full name, Elite Atlas such and such. It's got about like four different sort of like subtitles uh, to it. Um, so I originally bought, when my last headset broke, I did buy sort of like their standard one as, as just something... Uh, to, you know, to, to tide me over when I'm playing online multiplayer with friends, but uh, I just could not stand the quality of that headset, and I just ended up caving and buying the most expensive one they had. So yeah, I'm hoping it does work as uh, sort of like a, you know, a decent streaming microphone as well. The trouble is, I, I, I do have uh, some difficulties with microphones, as... Uh, and I, I say this in the least braggadocious way possible, but I do have a bit of a deep voice, and it can be tricky for some microphones to, uh, you know, pick me up if I'm not speaking at a certain pitch. And some headsets uh, just don't register me at all, or it sounds like I'm whispering. Uh, whispering. Okay. And he's going to run through there. Yeah, okay, you're going to lock that door, and then I'm going to do one and go back up here.
interesting. I underestimated the covenants under You are correct, Ludacris. Uh, the doors. Some games are, you know, can be quite appreciated from a historical perspective, uh -huh. which is, I suppose, the idea for you know the creation of my channel was to you know help people find games that they may have missed. So. Negative, um, the covenant have impeded our progress. We can't proceed unless we can disable this installation security. Sixteen uh, bit. If you've only played Halo Two, that is fine. Uh, I personally would recommend that you get stuck into more of them, but you know, it's, that's that's me saying that. So of course I would say that um, Master Chief Collection is uh, is a unbelievable package in terms of. Well, I was going to say it's a great bargain, but it's on Game Pass now, so it's practically free. Um, and then, you know, they're not too long; they can all be finished in the space of a dedicated day or a weekend. Or, you know, I'd say give them a spin. Um, I'm not making the game look very fun right now because I'm driving up a wall. It looks like there is a path into the interior of the island. We need to find the security override to get this door open. What we got over here? Yeah. Yep, yeah. ammo, ammo, ammo. I need that pistol. There we go. Right, we got to leave that warthog here because I don't think it can fit this little area. Yeah, we, uh, well, I suppose you weren't in the chat earlier, 16 bit, but we did sort of cover just how uh, awkward the, the vehicles can be to control. So don't feel uh, like you're the odd one out in that regard. I've played, I, I pretty much play every single Halo game once or twice every year, and I've I'm still not mastered the controls of, you know, Fall, uh, I fall out of those vehicles on a regular basis. Uh, it's just part of the fun. Physics are... Well... Strange. Oh wow, he snuck up on me. Oh, that's gonna kill me. Get out there, get out there. God. There we go. Don't know what it is about the hunters there, just I know exactly how to beat them. You wait for them to attack, you jump over, and then you shoot them in the back. Yet yeah, I just always seem to panic. And I told you, this animation here, very satisfying. Get this other overshield over here if I didn't pick it up already, and we can continue moving. <laughs> so, yeah, as I said earlier, this gun is so overpowered, but very satisfying to sort of shots off because there's just such a punch to, to its sound design that it's just hard not to love. Um, and as it's some, something that a lot of people, I feel like a lot, a lot of developers miss with shooters or have missed with shooters over the years, um, especially in the sixth generation that you know I notice all the time is just Sound design with weapons goes a long way. Um, if you get the sound design right, your game feels completely different. If, if, if what you are shooting feels sort of like thunderous and powerful and, and whatever, it, it, it sort of... it translates uh, in, in such a different way that even even if you took the exact same sort of gun and just placed a you know a, a bit more of a limp uh, sound effect on it, oh, I'm gonna die! No, I'm not. Um, you could take the exact same animation, the exact same sort of vibration, the exact same control scheme, all of that. If you put the wrong sound effect on it, it loses all of its sort of oomph, for lack of a better word. 
and and before you know it, your game feels just sort of a lot more bland. There we go. I didn't panic that time. Stayed calm. Yeah, sound design goes a long way with me. And, you know, for those developers who get it right, um, I think you Use can create something that is not only, you know, fun to use, but it, it, I, think, I think, you know, good sound design just becomes more memorable. And that's the, you know, that's the whole point of this uh, this entire thing is that, is that you're supposed to walk away from this experience and tell people about it. At least that's my view on, you know, what great games are. Because, you know, do you want to show this to your friend? Yes or no? Oh, we got some uh, cannon leaks in here. I should have known better. Agreed, 16-bit. Um, yeah, it cannot. It, it, uh, for me, it can't be overstated. Um, okay. Chief, Bravo 22. So I used to be able to. I normally I'm I able to sort of hunters, I you could use slide down here. Oh Let's God! Probably wouldn't have made that if I didn't have the overshield. That. Uh, do we have any pistol ammo? Yep. And we are going to dash the assault rifle in favour of the rocket launcher because <sighs> with a pistol and a uh, rocket launcher you can do some serious damage in this game. Yeah, I know exactly what you mean about sort of <laughs> so, yeah silence as well is also uh, you know can be an important aspect of that whole thing uh, you know knowing when to sort of like have a soundtrack blaring out and when not to um, you know can go a long way uh, and even some games there's some games I've played for my channel that have dreadful uh awful voice acting, but still kind of get the rest of the sound design right. And as a result of that, the, you know, the bad points are less noticeable. Oh, wow. Yep. That was a bad idea. Alright, he's done for. Is he? No, he's still alive. He's still alive. There we go. Good thing I'm playing this on normal, otherwise that would have been embarrassing. Now we get back downstairs to uh, our friend who locked the door, who's ran off, won't make an appearance until a little later. Uh, now you can go running straight down here, or you can walk over here for a random cutscene that you can skip uh, if you want to. And just watch Chief kick a rock. And that's it. <laughs> that's literally the cutscene. Um, you know, which isn't uh, bad by any means of getting across just sort of like how deep this uh, alien structure is. But, uh, yeah. No complaints from me. I'm not quite sure what these little uh, milestones are popping up on the right hand side. I don't know if the <clears throat> Master Chief Collection has been through a bit of an update recently and adding these stuff in because the amount of times I've played through these games on the Master Chief Collection, I would have thought, you know, milestone wise of kind of like get this many pistol kills or get this many, you know, headshots, I would have thought I would have got all of them. You are right, Steady Sphere. Uh, you know, 
I mean, games are going to have their, their their Easter eggs, but at the end of the day, gaming back in this period was generally made by a bunch of, like, I don't know, I think Halo was made by a team of less than, could be wrong, like 20 people? Very, a very small team. Like, it wasn't, they may have had external help from uh, Microsoft, but I feel like it was a very small team that put this together and... You know, when you get stuff like that, especially with, you know, I suppose you see it now in, like, the indie games and such, that there's there's a lot more quirk that goes into stuff when it's just made by uh, a, a smaller team rather than, you know, the 200 people that would put together an Assassin's Creed or something like that, which, you know, while they're fun games, they, they, they are very by the numbers. Almost uh, coming towards the end of this one. I feel like there was something for me to pick up around here, or I could be thinking of something else. Uh, oh, it's that. Yeah, it's that ledge there. It's the overshield. Always got to be careful going around, uh, going over these ledges. It's always kind of hard to judge how far you can actually go before Chief just falls to his death. Risky parkour. Odd. Let's reload, because I'm not going to have to take this guy down. And the elite's done. Well, this might be a good comparison. See, yeah, again, right, perfect example. And I know you're saying, okay, you've talked about this a billion times, please shut up and move on and just play the game. But this, <laughs> this elite's armor, in the original graphics, has this nice kind of weird alien-looking metallic, you know, sort of like otherworldly aspect to to its sort of texture whereas here i mean perfectly fine but sort of i don't know the the, the texture looks a lot more flat uh and and loses sort of how would you say it it, it looks a bit more plasticky um but you know it it, it looks fine it looks fine I do my best not to shit on the developers who put together this remake. They did a fine job. Uh, more talented people than I worked on this thing, so... Who am I? The guy who talks about games on the internet to... Uh, question their decisions. There. That hollow panel should activate the map. Analyze it. Halo's control center is located there. That structure appears to be some sort of temple or shrine, if I've interpreted this correctly. Oh, I'm still on the anniversary visuals. <clears throat> Let me switch back. Although we're coming to this at the end of this level, to be fair. Uh, four missions in. It's sort of roundabout where I thought I'd make it to uh, across the you know the couple hours of the stream. I thought I'd maybe get a little bit further, but um, who knows? I may get stuck in here forever as I appear to be lost getting out of this structure. Indeed, steady sphere, generic is the word I was searching for. Well, I'll tell you what isn't generic is this crazy soundtrack that's playing right now, which was not in the original, I don't believe. And you want to talk about epic soundtracks and Halo has got you covered. Why am I meleeing from six feet away? Launcher. What am I doing? There we go. Here I am pissing about with a pistol. 
plasma. Oh, you boys have really come to play. I need more weapons. Or maybe I can just leg it, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I've got one, one rocket left. I can sneak up on these guys. Where's the elite? Where's the elite? No, didn't get the elite. Alright, now he's done for. I'll have to take that plasma pistol off you. Because, or plasma rifle. If I'm not mistaken, the plasma weapons are better against shields, but I've never actually done any sort of like extensive testing on if that's the case. that I could listen to endlessly. Uh, <laughs> this is certainly one of them. Um, yeah, the <laughs> before before I was making uh, sort of YouTube reviews of uh, PS2 games, you want to talk about way, way, way back in the day when I initially discovered, uh, what was it, Windows Movie Maker? Um, Let's just say there were some very amateur videos made to this uh, soundtrack. Um, <laughs> that f the file uh, of the video I made may still exist in an old, 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 old file of uh, stuff that I brought across from hard drives back in the day. Uh, it will never see the light of day if it does exist, because I'd probably lose subscribers just for uploading it. In fact, I think my previous YouTube channel from back in, you know, I had, I had a YouTube channel back in 2006, 2007, it got banned using copyrighted music. So I don't even think I can, oh god, there, there was the guy with the sword, I said it was going to turn later. Oh. AMVs, yes, AMVs, I used to live uh, off of AMVs. Um, which I was always uh, baffled, or not baffled, always curious as to how people got hold of, uh, like, clips of <laughs> Dragon Ball Z and, and stuff like that. But, yeah, the amount of times I used to um, go onto YouTube and enter the words Dragon Ball Z and Linkin Park, well, yeah, I, I lost count. You know, Hybrid Theory was a good album, so <laughs> what, what are you going to do? And, uh, you know, and Meteora. But. Oh, God. <laughs> Chameleonaire and Conquer is the most random combination. I could, you could, you could ask me a million times what soundtrack do you think I combined with Conquer, and not once would I come up with Chameleonaire. That is spectacular. Yeah, Lucas Frawl, uh, 2004 to 2006 are also very interesting periods. We cross over to, you know, 7th gen, HD, all of those bits. Um, yeah. I mean, if, if my channel goes on long enough, eventually I'll have to move into the 360 era. But, uh, yeah. Whether I'm still making YouTube videos that far into the future is a different question. Kazar and LimeWire. I never thought of that. I only used Kazara and LimeWire to, yeah. Well, I didn't. You know what? I'm on. I'm on the internet uh, recording myself, so I'm not going to state that I used Kazara and LimeWire at all. I did not acquire any copyrighted media 
through through illegitimate means. Um, so nice try, 16-bit dub, but I'm not going to incriminate myself. And there we have it. Finish uh, off the silent cartographer mission. Pretty much bang on the two-hour mark. Uh, and uh, yeah, that is probably where I'm going to have to call the stream there. But um, as we sort of like wrap up this cutscene, um, for all of those uh, that you know have joined me over the last two hours, um, very much appreciated. Uh, and um, yeah, hope you <laughs> I hope you enjoyed uh, your time with me. And it wasn't too uh, you know tedious watching me use nothing but the Halo CE Magnum. Um, but yeah, thanks for joining me. I'll do my best to get back on here again soon. Whether I form some sort of schedule is is a is a is a different question. Um, as you know, there's a lot of things up in the air at the minute. Um, but yeah, hopefully you can join me again. Uh, if you're not already, go check out my YouTube. Uh, if you want more of my stuff, uh, Retro Game Reader, go follow me. You shouldn't follow me on Twitter really but if you would like to follow me on twitter that's uh, retro game rater um as i said uh, earlier as well go follow steady sphere go follow 16-bit dad they make a bunch of good stuff um and yeah we'll just uh we'll call it there thanks again and